What's up, guys? Bush did 9-11. We never made it to the moon. And uh, Epstein killed himself. Maybe? Yeah. <laughs> this is Ice Cream Sunday, episode number 41. Uh, my name is Austin Buckner. I'm Trevor Holder. And uh, this episode is all about conspiracy theories. Honestly, it's kind of a filler episode. Yeah. We weren't sure what to talk about. Conspiracy seemed like a good idea, yeah. and then we went down a rabbit hole. Yeah, as you do. Yeah. As um, you do. It was, it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I got some perspectives from you that I, just, I guess I wouldn't expect. That I don't trust the government. Yeah. Yeah. Or anybody. Or anybody. Except my lovely wife. Maybe Vince McMahon. I don't trust Vince McMahon. Apparently you do, because we talked about the Montreal Screwdrop. Yeah. Yeah. Are you the problem? Vince McMahon rapes people, though. <laughs> That's an important detail to keep in mind here. <laughs> but <laughs> That's the end of the intro. <laughs> Should we? Yeah. As for a laugh, yeah, let's yeah, why do that. Not? Yeah. All right. Sit back, relax, and enjoy episode <laughs> number 41 of the Ice Cream Sunday podcast. We're so sorry. Are there any conspiracy theories that you believe in your heart of hearts is true? Oh, man. Aliens. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. It would Spe- specifically Area Fifty One. Yes, I believe oh, that's real. Oh, we're going that far. Not just that there's life out there somewhere that they. It have would be stupid. Us. Look, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I know that we were going to do this as a conspiracy theory fucking uh, episode of the podcast, but there's no fucking way you can legitimately look at me and tell me that there isn't intelligent life or other life forms out in the universe in other galaxies. I believe. I believe that. I definitely believe that there are life other life forms somewhere it's it's very convenient that if we're the only ones absolutely very convenient but you want to go as far as to say they have visited here and area 51 is real yeah okay okay you were just chowing down on that sour candy and i can hear the fucking <laughs> No, sorry. No. Um, any any other big ones, or do you want to stick 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 to aliens? Why 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 do you think aliens are real? Just because of the notion that like we can't be the only ones out there, or do you think that there's hard line evidence that like I think a lot of it has to do with there's no way we're not the only ones, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but yeah, no, I think there is hard evidence that there are aliens out there. Do I believe they visited? Yeah. If not, I believe that we have at some point made contact with them. Hmm. Interesting. And I also personally believe that... Area 51 is le- a legitimately real place that houses those secrets. When you say those secrets, do you mean like they perform alien autopsies there or we have any number of things? Spacecraft or yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think is there? Aircraft for sure. Okay. Or at least. You know what? I'll I'll make it as basic as possible. I believe that Area 51 houses alien technology. Okay. 
Uh, to which extent that is, I have no idea. I couldn't even begin to imagine. With that being said, you got to find it a little strange that if you go to Google Earth, that is one of very few places, incredibly few places in the world that does not show up on Google Earth. It's fair. That is fair. Um, Don't you think, though, that if there were aliens and there was a research facility in the United States that our most recent president who was world famous for not being able to shut the fuck up would have divulged these secrets. And see, I thought that too. Um, as problematic as he was and as problematic as a lot of his followers were or sub or supporters <laughs> are yes um i do believe that at some point with with as batshit insane as things got for a while that even they were like maybe let's not let him know it's fair. Yeah. I think as far as like the biggest conspiracy theory that I truly believe is true, that would have the biggest implications were it true. Um, I, I honestly believe that the U S government is responsible for nine 11. Yeah. Yeah. Everything just seems very, again, uh, very uh what's the word convenient I'm convenient very convenient now, here's the thing this happened over 20 years ago yeah and it's still one of the most widely regarded conspiracy theories of all time i just think it's 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 interesting to me that bush becomes president right sworn in voted in in november 20 or 2000 November 2000 takes office January of 2001 his vice president is the former head of Halliburton a I don't want to say an arms dealer that's not the word I'm looking for it's not the term I'm looking for <laughs> but they're basically like they create technology for the military um, it would behoove Dick Cheney to start an unwinnable, unendable war to line his pockets. Um, and wouldn't you know it, a lot of those military contracts went to Halliburton uh, when we started the war on terror uh, in, in the fallout of 9-11. Um, I am not a demolition expert by any means. I do think it is uh convenient and interesting how both towers fell so uh uniformly um i also think it is interesting that there is little to no footage of the third plane hitting the most heavily guarded building in the united states um and no debris. And very little debris. Yes, if if any. Uh, or debris that just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I just... Uh, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me taking in my biases and not ever trusting the government since I was like nine years old. But... Uh, so, I mean, this this episode could definitely get us put on a list. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I remember one... One year, my dad had come across a a DVD, um, and it was a very strange DVD. Mm -hmm. I had gotten off of work. There was like a ring and a girl in a well, and then he watched it seven days later. Honestly, like... that would be better. <laughs> um, that weird, huh? 
I'm trying to... I, I struggle to think of the name. I want to say it's... Spare Change or Two Cents or something like that. Okay. So I'd gotten off of work. I got home and I was told about this DVD that my girlfriend at the time and my dad were watching. And um, at the beginning of the DVD, supposedly... You, you left your girlfriend at the time alone with your dad to watch DVDs? Yeah, he was living with us for a little while. It's a bad idea. I know. The indoctrination. <laughs> <laughs> um, So, supposedly, and like I said, I was at work, so I had no idea. But both of them swear up and down that when they threw in the DVD, there was a message that popped up that said, if you are found in possession of this DVD, um, you can be um, arrested and held for held and charged for treason. What? I swear to God, up and down, like this is what they told me. Why didn't they just show you the DVD? Because you haven't heard the most interesting part of it. They're like, you need plausible deniability. <laughs> I didn't believe them. Okay. And it started making sense after they showed me the DVD. Because there's a DVD on 9-11. Ah. The strange part was they removed the DVD. They put it back in. No matter how they started it up, that message never popped up again. What? I know. I thought that was weird, too. And that just kind of led me to believe, like, no way. But I can see my dad falling for something like that. But to have two people... I don't know. I feel like your dad talked your girlfriend into like pranking you. But you see, it seems very convenient that it does. They can't. They can't read. But it's not like they. Ex- it's screen. not like they saw eye to eye either. So I mean, well, fair. It's I don't know. It's weird. Um. So nine eleven was an inside job. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I can I you know what I can I can get with that one. Um Do you think Epstein was murdered? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? So again, another one of those things where it's like, oh, that's certainly convenient. Like the the guards fell asleep, the cameras weren't working, like it's, you all, know, it's all very convenient. You know, I talked to someone who who had their thoughts on that and they're like, no, like he did commit suicide because of of these few things. And he pointed out, and while it did make sense, I still can't get past the fact, like, come on. Yeah. How does the security go out? How do the guards just not know? There's you so, know, that many, kind of thing. so many things that just, I think that the biggest thing for me with conspiracy theories is like, oh, that's it's convenient. It seems very, uh, why, if anything, that Jeffrey Epstein uh, would supposedly get murdered and not Ghislaine Maxwell? Well, <laughs> part of me wonders, like, uh, we did sort of kind of get away with smirking uh, Epstein. Like, we can't do it twice. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you also got to think, like, they got rid of the scapegoat. Yeah. And that would have scared her enough to be like, um Right. Um Ooh, here's a big one. Okay. Did we go to the moon? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Okay. What's your evidence for believing so? I'm just playing devil's advocate. I believe so as well, but I believe we went to the moon. Um I believe that Anything that people have found that can be easily explained as to why we didn't, like lighting mm-hmm. or 
the flag, the, especially the flag. Like, it doesn't make sense, like, why the lighting is this way. I'm like, it does, because the sun was still visible, and they're using a light from a fucking camera mounted mm-hmm. on the suit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think playing devil's advocate, the whole, like, we never went to the moon, we it, it's all fabricated because... Uh, the Soviet Union fucking destroyed us in every outer space milestone. So we had to like make up that we landed on the moon to feel like we got a victory in the whole Cold War. Um, that all makes sense. Um, but just knowing like how, listen, I've seen, have you seen the CGI from the Scorpion King? Okay. Then, yeah. then go back 40 years before that. Uh, it was, wasn't good. It wasn't great. And you're telling me that we used CGI and computer-generated graphics to fake a moon landing in 69. And, and um, sorry to kind of get past that, was uh, the, the fucking flag, right? They put a rod in it. Yeah. Like, come on. Well, that's the whole, I mean, there's no, am I looking for the word atmosphere on, uh, there's no atmosphere on earth. There's no, so you have to, to make it do the thing. Yeah. You're not just going to put a rod in the ground and just have something just sit there. You gotta put a rod in it, make it do the whole fucking Flappy Bird you thing. Want, yeah, you want to make it look good. It's supposed to be a symbol. What yeah. good's a symbol if you can't see it? Bingo, bingo, bongo. Okay. Um. Moon landing real. Aliens real. Nine eleven inside job. Okay, let's let's do something current. What do you think about the uh, recent train derailments? Uh, or have you not followed enough on I, I followed it a little bit. Are you saying that the conspiracy theory is that like it was derailed like on purpose? Yeah. It's a little weird and a little convenient that there's a train that got derailed in Oklahoma. Ohio. Ohio, yes, thank you. Palestine, Ohio. Yes, uh, got derailed in Ohio, carrying hazardous materials. Yeah. Essentially creating a natural disaster, or a a, a disaster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then there's another derailment. I don't remember where the second one was. I know that there was a second derailment. There's a third derailment. That happened just outside of Detroit. Here's the thing. And I, I realized that like this all, again, using the word convenient, um, it would seem like, yeah, maybe they're being targeted and uh, these are legitimate, like they're being, like, I don't know, targeted and these are on purpose and there's a reason for them. But at the same time, I think this goes back to me just not, not trusting the government. Our infrastructure especially when it comes to the rail system is so poor yeah that it it shocks me that there's not a major derailment like once a week so let me get into that because i looked into a little bit um as of last year there was roughly 1100 derailments reported last year in a 365 day span, mm-hmm. there were 1,100 derailments. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also got to keep in mind that that could also mean like a train skipped the tracks or some, you know, something sure. something incredibly minor. Sure. Well, sure. And they just have to count that as a derailment, right? To go into that, um, there have also been uh, strikes recently mm-hmm. because. Workers weren't getting their pay, um, weren't getting benefits, 
you know, their hours suck, you know, just basic stuff that was just fucking them over. So they, they were going on strike. Now, you know, you had a bunch of them saying like, hey, these things are going to happen, which is why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Not just for like our own personal benefit, but legitimately something needs done. And if it doesn't, something's going to happen. And sure enough, just happens to coincidentally happen while this is all happening. Mm -hmm. One of the derailments, and I can't remember which one, was due to uh, an issue with an axle because the axle broke. You ever, you ever been in a car where an, an axle like broke in half? No. So my, do you remember like the like the this is off topic, but the string of like when I turned sixteen and my grandparents would get me like really old shitty cars. And for whatever reason, then we kept going backwards in years. So like I started with a 1992 Ford Taurus and then we went to a 1990 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. And then we went to a 1989 Mercury Grand Marquis. We just kept getting older for some reason. Um, but the second car that I had was the, the 1990 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. I was taking my brother back to school. It was his freshman year. Mm -hmm. Yes. It would have been his freshman year. I believe at Iowa Western community college in council bluffs. And I was, as I was coming back, I was still in council bluffs and the axle had rusted out and just split in half and I lost control of the vehicle. It was like the only, and I didn't hit anybody cause I was like, there was no one else around, but it was the only, like the worst quote unquote accident I've ever gotten in was just completely losing control of my, my vehicle. So anyway, so to to go on with that, uh, when the axles broke, and this was an issue that has that was a primary concern in the 19th century, mm -hmm. and and very specific workers were like, "There's absolutely no reason that in the 21st century, aside from." It being intentional or willful neglect or ignorance on it, that that is an issue that should still be happening. And I, to that point, I would be more willing to accept the idea that it is willful negligence than an on-purpose sabotage of, of the rail system. Um, just oh. knowing how our roads our bridges, just the the fact that a lot of rural communities are still without internet. Just our our infrastructure as a whole in this country, for the most part, is just so, it's so poor um, that I could see. I, I would I would lean more toward negligence than legitimate sabotage. And while I see that. I also feel like I need to point out, like, again, it seems a little weird that, and and this could be this could be media, uh, just focusing like focusing on it, and you know, it just happens to be while they're focusing on it, which is why, uh, you know, we're seeing more of it. I wanted to talk to you about that as well, but. To have multiple derailments that involve hazardous materials. One of them, like, basically to, to the point where law enforcement or in, in, any of the agencies involved with it are saying, hey, you're good to come back, but don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... I I watched a lot about it and uh it just I don't know. It it, it it always bugs me how quickly things that seem like, hey, we should very easily come together on the same page about this. How it becomes like this crazy, like bipartisan, like you have conservatives blaming like 
the EPA and all of these uh, regulations. And then you have uh, Democrats saying like, oh, there's not enough. And that's what causes it. And it's just like, why can't you guys just come together and just solve the problem? Um, I, I guess going off of, you, you mentioned the media, the other big conspiracy theory is that like when you see uh uh, this is just a random example. Like when you see Tucker Carlson going off about how much he wants to fuck green M&Ms, uh, it is, it is because they're trying to divert attention away from something else that the government is doing. And the media is used as an arm of the government to distract the masses away from, is that something that you believe in? Is that something that uh, you think that there's any, any truth to? Or does Tucker Carlson simply just want to fuck M&M's? I mean, I think there is some truth to it being a possibility. You're like, little column A, little column B. Yeah. Um, I also think Tucker Carlson really wants to fuck that great M&M. I don't know. I, he's such a fucking shitbag. Um... Do I think the government has used the media? Yes. Do I think it's on a regular basis? No. Yeah, I it it all reminds me of do you remember the it was a viral video where it showed all of the local news stations? So it would be like Davenport, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa. It would be like all of these small little markets. It's, I know where you're going yeah, with this. That's all owned by Sinclair Broadcasting and they mm -hmm. all give the same scripted message it reminds me of that where it's like okay so you wanted to get out this message and 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 harmless harmless message that's basically like hey we're all you know we're all doing this for your benefit but it's like can can messages from whatever it be the fucking government the illuminati the, whatever um are they being disseminated through local media or or even mainstream media uh, to distract us from some deeper whatever that might be might be happening. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. You have more. Uh, I, think you, I feel like you have more faith in your government than I do. Well, I mean, fact of the matter is, you got to look at it this way: uh, Sinclair, right, owns whatever majority of the media, right? Mm -hmm. Look at it as if you would a fast food place, Starbucks, mm -hmm. McDonald's. They have a very set, uh, like rehearsed way to do things, sure. right? For consistency's sake. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to have that across the board everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. It's part of, you know, the uniform. Yeah. Same thing goes for the media. Sinclair owns that. They have to put out this thing that they own. Everyone has to follow suit. Doesn't necessarily have to be uh, word for word as, at a certain point. But they do have to follow a certain scripted uh, section to mm -hmm. go off of. More lighthearted and fun conspiracies, sports consi conspiracies, sports entertainment conspiracies. Do you think that the 1997 Montreal screw job where Shawn Michaels was awarded the WWE title after Bret Hart did not tap out to the sharpshooter, do you think it was all a work? Or do you think Bret Hart was legitimately screwed out of the title? I think he was legitimately screwed. I think it was a work. I I think he was legitimately screwed because of how long he's gone on about it. Like, you mean to tell me it was work and that he's still he still being paid to peddle that shit? Yeah. Yeah. You you, you really you really I do. Think... Here's the reason I, I think so, is okay. that so you, you got to keep in mind, this man has had nothing to do with wrestling, uh, mainstream at least. True. Uh, 
until he got put into the Hall of Fame, to which he got attacked by some random fan. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I personally don't believe that he would have carried this on this long, saying all this. Multiple documentaries made specifically about this. That is primarily why I think it's all bullshit. You conveniently the craziest thing to ever happen behind the scenes in wrestling history happens to have like occur on the same night that Bret Hart just so happens to have his documentary crew in there filming a documentary about his life called wrestling with shadows. Like it all happens that night. Um, I just think it's, it's very, Again, same word, probably going to be the title of this, this podcast. It's very convenient that I, I just think that there's so much benefit in, in doing it that way for, <gasps> for Brett's sake to have him not drop the title and then be able to go over to WCW and say, I never lost the title. I am still the top wrestler in the world. I'm the biggest fucking star in wrestling. It didn't work out that way because WCW had no idea how to use them. But I just think that it it was instead of a like screw job for Brett, I think that it is it's like a it's a thank you to Brett on behalf of like McMahon to say, hey, no need to drop the title. This is my my gift to you. We're gonna let you exit through the gift shop as like the biggest star that couldn't be beaten in Canada as you as you move on. Can can I throw out a possible title for this episode? Sure. CCTV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um no. Um the reason why I think it's real, right? Is because and and I hear what you're saying, but it goes back to how long they've been able to run this, right? Mm -hmm. And what I mean, or the point I'm trying to get at is there's no way that a, a story like this was so expertly crafted that you have one side saying, oh yeah, Vince totally fucked him. And then you got another side saying, Brett did this to himself. Mm -hmm. Right? And they kept that going. And if it were real, or, um, I mean, if it were fake, you mean to tell me that the WWE has gone that long with that good of a story and then come up with all these shit stories for that long? <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. They don't do long, long form storytelling very well, very often. So yeah. I will give See? you that. Any other entertainment industry conspiracy theories? Oh, um, I you know what I I got a kind of a lighthearted one. It's just it's weird and you can't really. There's really not a lot to it. Do you believe Avril Lavigne's dead? <laughs> I, you could have given me <laughs> you could have given me 10 fucking guesses and there's no way that's what I thought was going to be the next question out of your mouth. Um <laughs> I will I will counter that with another question. Do you think that Paul McCartney died before the White Album? No. And it's a almost a crisis actor, <laughs> but it is a uh basically a, a fucking Paul McCartney cosplayer. No. Do you think that Avril Lavigne died and it's no. a different person? I think it is because the real Avril Lavigne would end up married Chad Kroger. When you have a dude that has a track on the Spider-Man soundtrack. That's fair. That is fair. I talk a lot of shit about Nickelback now, but... Uh, that song goes fucking hard. Yeah. On that Spider-Man soundtrack. Chad Kroger and Josie Scott. Yeah. It's fantastic. You know, funny we bring this up because I specifically remember the year that movie came out, 
and you know they released the soundtracks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I remember it because I got that soundtrack as a Christmas gift that year. Nice. And I listened to that motherfucker day in and day out. That was that was my shit. Yeah. Um I that movie came out in 2002, I believe. Mm-hmm. So I would have been like 13. Yeah. I feel like I feel like a good portion of my sexual awakening was seeing Kirsten Dunst's nipples uh in the upside down kiss scene. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, man. That had to have been so hard to do. I mean, he had to have basically been waterboarded, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's hanging upside down, and water's just going in his nose, and he can't breathe. I would assume. <laughs> Come on. At the end of the day, you get to kiss Kirsten Dunst, so. That's true. It's not all bad. Yeah, but when you're replaced with a mannequin for a scene, do you not know that? Well, I don't, what are you talking about? There's a scene in the movie where he's swinging with Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> And it's very clearly uh, she's holding on to a mannequin. It's not a person. Hmm. Have you seen the Will Smith TikTok where it's like him driving and then ah, what? I can't think of what uh, what movie it is. Men in Black maybe? I don't know, but there's a movie where it's supposed to be Will Smith, but then someone like stops it and goes frame by frame and it's like some old fat. Oh, nope, it's Bad Boys 2. That's right. Bad boys too. Yeah. Because I specifically saw, like, after seeing that, I looked back at it because I I just happen to be watching on Netflix right now. And sure enough, yeah. But did you, did you also see it in Will Smith related news? The I Am Legend 2? Well, there's that, yeah. Okay, okay. So real quick, I Am Legend 2. They're making a sequel based off of the, the original... Yeah. alternate ending yeah and it's also gonna have michael p jordan in it which is the same ending as the book the book yeah. yes yeah um i liked i am legend yeah i'm so excited for it sure yeah i'll go see it um it's michael b jordan i'll go see everything he's in so they announced uh the next bad boys movie and it was him and martin lawrence being like yeah, bad boys, bad boys for life. He's like, no, that was like the last one, but that was the third one. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's that's our bad. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that was really funny. I also think it's funny that uh, every sequel for the uh, Fast and the Furious has a different like template for the title. Yeah, like too fast, or the Fast and the Furious. Too Fast, Too Furious, The Fast and the Furious, Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift. Look, I'm really Fast pissed. X. I'm okay. Here's the thing. I'm pissed off that for Fast X, they didn't say Fast Ten. Your seatbelts. <laughs> belts. Fucking missed opportunity. <laughs> I <laughs> I I don't know where I was going with this. I just I lost all train of thought. You're welcome. Uh, in Ohio. Um Yeah, um what the fuck was I going to say? I don't know. We were talking about Will Smith and then it just kind of um oh, I remember what I was going to say. I thought it was funny that uh there's people like very anti Fast and Furious. They don't like the movie series, right? right? And they're like, finally, this series is over because the advertising is like the end begins or the beginning of the end. And I'm like, ah, no, those cheeky bastards said it's the beginning of the end. There will probably be at least another seven goddamn movies. No, so they've actually confirmed that um, Fast X is part one of uh two more movies so, or uh, sorry uh, of one more so basically movie. 11 movies total 12 hobbs Whoa. hobbs and shaw oh jesus yeah um 
we always go back to video games. Yeah. Because for obvious reasons. Is there any video game conspiracy theories? Oh, yes. Okay, so there is a video I watch every now and then. It, you ever you ever listen to... Or think of it as a show or an audiobook or uh, just something that you go... Or, or even a podcast that you just go back to and listen to that one specific one. Oh, like... like this is my this is my comfort song or my comfort album. Or yeah, my, yeah, yeah, something sure. like that. Yeah, like Amy will listen to Harry Potter audiobooks. Yeah, even though she's listened to them a thousand fucking times. Yeah. So, um, so there's a, there's a, a YouTuber by the name of Stake Bentley, and no relation to Trevor. <laughs> Although he wishes <laughs> steaks are delicious. <laughs> no, um. So he, I had never heard of this guy up until I found, I came across this video Mm -hmm. and immediately the guy knows how to craft a fucking video because this is over three hours long. Right. And the title of it was Metal Gear Solid 4 was a mistake. Okay. And so he covers, I shit you not from the very beginning of Metal Gear Solid 4. Also going into other Metal Gear Solid games to the end of Metal Gear Solid 4. And he goes in, into detail of um, the inner workings of like Kojima, um, uh, Fukushima, you know, uh, anyone involved with it. Mm-hmm. And one of the conspiracy theories that he actually touched on in part, which honestly, by the way, you should absolutely check this out. If you, if you throw it in the background, he's really funny. It's a very, very expertly crafted, uh, thing. Um, but one of the conspiracy theories he goes into is that, I I guess one of the original co-creators of Metal Gear Solid, because everyone, you know, just widely accepts Kojima's it. Of course. But he wasn't originally. But one of the original co-creators uh, had supposedly died, just dropped off the face of the planet. Except, and and no one knows what happened to him. Nothing, except for a possible credit on a on one video game at a certain point in time. After that, it just no one knows. Like you can't find any contact info for the guy. Nothing. I don't know. I. I that's just a weird thing. Maybe not necessarily a conspiracy theory, but I just really... Yeah. Oh, oh you son hey, of a you bitch. Hey, you did it. I'm even you in the field. son of a bitch. Um, yeah, honestly, I think I think that's just an interesting fact for me, not necessarily a conspiracy theory. I'm trying to think if there's any localized, like, Des Moines area. Maybe not conspiracy theories, but, like urban legends or you know myths or okay off topic a little bit yeah cryptids is oh. there any cryptids that you're like mothman that you truly believe is legitimate mothman. you truly believe mothman 100% real okay i i undoubtedly believe now is that. this is this a i believe in my heart that mothman is real or is it a, I so desperately wish Mothman was real? I believe in my heart he is real. Okay. Interesting. I, can I explain it? Do I have any any proof? I absolutely do not. Do I 100% believe he's real? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, think, w- I wish I could explain it. For me, I think the, the most obvious one for me is, is Bigfoot. Like that just seems like the most reasonable one that could be true. There's a fucking yeah. bipedal ape man in the woods of the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Um. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh, you know, kind of along the same lines. Have you heard of something called SCP? No. Okay, so this is one of those, um, it started on the internet things and just kind of has a life of its own at this point. So SCP 
is a form of creepy pasta. <laughs> okay. Do you know what creepy pasta is? No. It's basically like uh freaky supernatural um internet stories. Okay. Stuff like that. Uh Do you remember Russian sleep experiment? Oh yeah. That's a creepy pasta. Gotcha. Okay. So SCP the idea is there is a secret agency. Can't say government because it, it it's one of those things that like it they're bigger than that. It, almost kind of like, you know, the Illuminati or something to that effect. The idea is that SCP stands for secure, contain, protect. And so the idea of this agency is to round up any um, supernatural. I, it's hard to like narrow down. Like they're supposed to round up these entities. Each of them uh, has their own thing. The best example that I know you're going to understand: control. Mm. Oh, the video game. Yep. It's yes. just like that. Gotcha. So control is essentially based off of like the SCP shit. Gotcha. Okay. So it's just like that. Cool. I do have and and stop me if I've, I've said this story on the podcast before. I do have a localized conspiracy theory from years and years ago. So this would have been like the year after I graduated, I believe there was a string of graffiti on businesses and residential homes in Greenfield, Iowa. And it was just, it was, it was very crude. And all it said was RSB. I don't think you've ever told me this. No. Okay. No. So I'm interested. This was like a year after I graduated. Okay. And you saw RSB everywhere. Like in my, you know, the alley behind my house where like the garage is. So my next door neighbor, uh, Donna Bittner, her garage got hit. Just as RSB, real big, big, okay. like red leather, red letters, I believe. Saw it everywhere. One of the conspiracy theories was that it was a family of, it was a black family that had moved in and it, they were to blame. And RSB stood for rule of the Southern black. And they thought it was like a gang thing because black people are scary in Greenfield, Iowa. Yeah, that that seems like more of a convenience. Yeah, right? It's a, it's, it's a fucking stretch. Come to find out, and I'm not going to tell you who it was. I'll tell you off air. Oh, yeah. But to protect the innocent, protect the guilty, <laughs> the uh, RSB stood for Rochambeau. It meant fucking nothing. And it was just some <laughs> idiot fucking kids from you our You know high who school. did it, didn't you? Oh, I know exactly who did it. So I remember I remember the story because my I talked to my uncle about it, who's like a big conspiracy theorist anyway, oh, yes. about a few things. And he was the one that was telling me, like, yeah, the cops believe that it might be related to this black family that just moved into town. And I was like, Why? Why? And he's like, because RSB potentially stands for <laughs> rule of the Southern Black. Potentially, see how they're see how they per, like yeah. specifically word that like, to where if they're wrong, they're like, I was like, that's not even a thing. Like Google RSB like graffiti or rule. There's like you can't find anything. They just made that up. They're just like, oh. African Americans in our little <laughs> Iowan town must be them. <laughs> like, um, any last, was it any last words? Fucking any last words? Um, any last conspiracy theories that we didn't talk about that you want to touch on? None that I can think of. But to be quite honest, I want to come back to the whole conspiracy theory thing. Um, and like actually have research done. Yeah. Like I, I want to come back. Each of us, ha- like respectively, like research yeah. and just really, really go in depth. This is just like a high level overview of conspiracy theories as a whole. Um, 
Honestly, this is a filler episode. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> like we're we're literally just killing time and yeah, killing bit. air. Yeah, a little bit. Um and then and then come back and actually deep dive into some of them. Yeah. I you, actually actually we've been talking about this for a while even before we started the podcast and this is something uh, that I've brought up probably multiple times on on the podcast. Is it Yep. Jennifer Grimes. Yep. <laughs> I haven't looked, but it haunts me. It, I continually yeah. think about it all the time. Yeah. Like it just I stop yeah, thinking some, about it and then it comes back. And, someday we'll have to do our research and maybe do some phone interviews and really deep dive deep into this story. If, for those that don't know what we're talking about, uh Trevor came across this post on a Grimes Iowa Facebook group from a woman named Jennifer Grimes, um, who posted that her her daughter was murdered. Someone murdered her daughter. Guinevere. Guinevere Grimes. Yep. Um, so someday down the road, we may have a unsolved mystery podcast or a personality profile on the craziest human being to ever and walk the face of the planet. I would I would almost love to like just like not just contain this into like an hour episode. I would. Oh, this might become the podcast. Yeah, like I, I want to do a marathon. I do want to give a bit more context to it, though. Right. So this woman Jennifer Grimes posted on the on a Grimes Iowa uh, group page, saying that someone had murdered her daughter. The thing about that is, um, everyone was looking into it or at, like talking to her asking her as if this were real like like this was a thing and people were trying to help her mm -hmm. and things just weren't adding up i um being the nosy uh curious person i am looked into her main profile and i was probably the only person that made the connection that her last name grimes was the same as the town and so somewhere in her mind, um, there was like some type of association with her name and the chat. And so that's why this person that lives in New York, mm -hmm. like the Buffalo, Albany area, yep, um, had posted in a Grimes, Iowa chat mm -hmm. it was because her last name matched up with it. Right. Um, this was during a period where Austin wasn't working. And when I sent him screenshots and we started talking about it, he specifically said, this is the absolutely worst thing you could have sent me. Yeah. Because I don't have a job and I have nothing to do. This is like what we talked about in the last episode. Like you can't give me any free time. Like I have to use it productively, like with a podcast. Cause if you give me free time, I will try to solve mysteries murder, I mean, murder mysteries i mean we looked into it we reached out to to actual people and have talked oh, to them read through years of just insane facebook ramblings like i i went back over two years and screenshotted every single post that she did reached out to her facebook friends to see if this person was even real um which she only had like a handful of Facebook friends. So she had that, like three or four. That's what I'm saying. And, I, I and think, a couple of them dropped off. A couple yeah. Of them my conspiracy on, theory know. there is that like maybe she's just, she's all of them. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think so. I don't know. It was, it was, uh, the thing that got weird about it though, is that like this person was dropping like social security numbers, home addresses, of these people that she says is involved in the murder of her daughter. And they're prominent figures. We're talking part of law enforcement, part of local um, politics. Local politics. Yeah. Um, she, she is name dropping her, her ex husband and you know, other things. Like it's very clear. Like there's something mentally unstable with yeah. this person. And then you and have to we take... can't tell if it's real or not. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to take all of it with a grain of salt because like you have, all of that, which is crazy enough on its own, but then you look through her posts and this woman is anywhere from like 40 to 98 years old. Like you, she's... Oh, over a hundred. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. I was in every war. 
Uh, I was in every war I've seen. Like she, she apparently time travels. I think. Um, yeah. So she, gotta, she's immortal, and she's been tortured, and she so hates you, Trump. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it's it's uh, it's a wild story that we haven't really dove into too much on this podcast. Um, I I might have to look her back up and see if there's been any updates. Um, whew. There, there's, there's, uh, what, what was her murdered daughter's name again? Guinevere. Guinevere. And she has another daughter named Genevieve who apparently wants That's nothing right. to do with her. That's right. And again, we've, we've done, we went extensive in this. This is something that we obsess over for a long time. Yeah. Um, but this is something I absolutely want to touch on and go like deep in. Even if we do like a live stream, that'd be awesome. Oh God! Like a live stream or like a fucking six-hour podcast. Like that would be so fun with her. Just call her. Maybe. Oh God! If we can, or uh, I, I would like to get Kevin involved. I think he would have a yeah. fucking field day with this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I might have to reach out to her again. Yeah. Uh, or uh, reach out to that old neighbor. Yeah, that was so. I, I think I, that was our most. I solid. talked to Jennifer, and she. Uh, she was, um, she was very polite and then it was, a uh, like a switch. Because... Yeah. It was very like, if you went even like half a day without messaging her, then she got like, she was very like, what do you want from me? Yeah. She was very paranoid. Like, yeah, I tried messaging her and, I'm, and she, she talked to me for like a few messages and then and, like flipped and was like super aggressive, rude, and just like wanted nothing. Like, yeah, it was crazy. I'm like, look, I'm just trying to help. Like, I, I want to know. Like, yeah, I used the like, I graduated with a degree in journalism from the blah blah, blah and I'm a journal professional journalist. It's like, I haven't done journalism like nine fucking years, but she saw the word journalist and she was like, oh, you must be reliable. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the the neighbor, um, one of her like three or four Facebook friends, was like, "Yeah, like we don't know much about her. She's kind of like keeps to herself." But we would pick her up and take her into town to get some like cigarettes or whatever. And she's always been a little weird, and we don't really know like her story. It seems to change every once in a while. It's just, um, yeah, yeah. The, we we could do we could do a ton on on that um and i don't think that i don't think that well's ever going to run dry i think it's going to be crazy for years to come so um yeah be on the lookout for some more insane jennifer grimes content um it's something that we've wanted to dive into for a long time but just um i honestly don't know how to what format it's going to take and, and what that's going to look like. Cause there's just, there's so much to it.